nervous you wouldn't be here in time. <laughs> to see you. I'm down the hallway. <laughs> He's just doing to make you nervous. I think so. <laughs>
Good morning, Good Chairman morning. Dobson and Planning Commission members. Amy Mordock, Planning Director. Um, a few updates about some initiatives that staff is involved in right now, which are more long-range planning issues. Uh, we're involved in a joint effort with the uh, Baltimore Metropolitan Council to work on a regional um, climate reduction, greenhouse gas reduction grant application. Our role would be to participate with the Baltimore Regional Council, of which Queen Anne's County is the only Eastern Shore County which is a part of this council um, due to our proximity to the Beltway and, of course, the bridge. Um, our role is to represent not only Queen Anne's interests but more of a rural perspective. And uh, in terms of a rural perspective's ability, to implement some of the greenhouse gas reduction and resiliency initiatives that would be drafted for a metropolitan area. Um, we're at the beginning stages of this um, project review in terms of compiling a notice of interest and submitting a grant application that is a joint application. That application will be submitted by the 31st of May. That's our deadline. Um, I'll let you know if that grant is awarded uh, after it has been submitted. And I don't think the grant awards will be announced until the end of the summer. So, um, I've been attending the National um, Association of Stormwater and Floodplain Managers virtual conference this week. Um, it's the largest uh, conference that the association has uh, had to date. There are over 2,000 participants from all over the country. Um, so far, it's been extremely interesting hearing about um, a lot of resiliency planning efforts related to stormwater and floodplain management from across the country, both inland and uh, coastal communities. So it's been very valuable. The conference is still going on. It's going on right now. Um, and we'll wrap up today. Uh, I wanted to also let you know that staff has been proactive in meeting with um, our representatives. Um, a staff member for uh, Senator Van Hollen has reached out, and I've met with her to make sure that uh, Queen Anne's County initiatives are on the Senator's radar moving forward. And I also have a follow-up meeting with our uh, MACO Planners Affiliate representative. Uh, this legislative session was very interesting, uh, and we are usually very good at um, reaching out to our representatives and representing the county's interests, but even still, I think that in light of some of the more creative legislation that we saw um, go through the, the session last year, um, making sure that those connections are constant throughout the year is uh, vital, so we're continuing to do that. Uh, we are working currently with the um, Bay Crossing study. They have formed an interagency coordination group. Uh, Queen Anne's County is a participating agency in this group um, and are working through basically the corridor analysis that is a part, well, the corridor analysis is complete, but we're evaluating that analysis of which Queen Anne's is a, plays a significant role. Uh, there was a tour, the, that initiative is kind of just kicking off, and there was a tour yesterday that Steve attended uh, for our department. Yes, I'm Steve Johnson, county planner. I, uh, I took the tour yesterday, it was very informative. Uh, it was from Severn River and Bridge all the way to the 5301 split uh, with stops at the old ferry terminal at the Bay Bridge, uh, Terrapin Park, and uh, Sandy Point. Um, it's interesting seeing all the environmental features and infrastructure and businesses along that route that are going to be impacted with you know, by this uh, this new bridge. So it would be interesting to see where it heads. Um, yeah. And Steve Cahoon with um, uh, DPW is is our main lead and point of contact for this study and is representing uh, the county's infrastructure and making sure that uh, in addition to some of the planning concerns within that corridor that um, all of the county's infrastructure is contemplated when reviewing this corridor and the impact to uh, Queen Anne's County. Okay. Okay. And um, I have... Uh, 
an update for the commissioners concerning the staff report. So you may have noticed that the resolution section of the staff report for the Chesapeake Square project. Wait a minute, are we finished with legislation and legal? Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. So now we're on miscellaneous. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Um, yes, the, the staff report for Chesapeake Square includes new findings that are specific to the code. Um, staff worked with Ms. Brinster to develop this change. Uh, in the past, it had been much more general, you know, general statements such as the project's consistent with the county code, it's consistent with the comprehensive plan. Moving forward, all site plans will include this language. Um, concept plans will continue to use the old language that you're used to seeing. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the update. I don't know if you had any questions about it, um, but when, you, when this is read through, you have to make a finding for each one of these. It would be found on page six of your staff report, I believe. So this one, when we get to it today, we don't have any recommendations from staff, correct? No. There's, that, that is the... It says does or does not in, in every instance. You, you, the commissioners have to make those findings. That's, okay. Yeah, yeah, those are your responsibility. The information leading up to making those findings should be included in the staff report and extracted through applicant testimony. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, is that it? Okay. Citizen sponsored text amendment. Mr. Drummond, can you help us out here and tell us? Well, I think we need to wait to see if any, there's a motion along these lines. Okay. No motion. There's no reason to um, talk about it. Yeah, delve into it. The old motion would stand. So I thought we had to talk about a clarifying language. That's if somebody makes a motion to amend it to, it requires someone to make a motion to change it putting it on the table that it requires clarification that has to be it has to be a clarifying motion or it can be any motion you can't just change your mind and change you can't change you and a losing side can't offer an amendment okay. there's no motion this month's then the last one stands. 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 Right. No, there's nothing to be clarified because there's no motion. No motion? I'd like to make a motion we amend the language of the last month's. Say so just to what? To, we need to know what the change would be. Well, technically he's the only one that's able to do that. Well, Jeff could do it, right? Okay. Yes, because he did vote. He did vote in favor of it, right? I don't have the language. Okay. Well, let me, I believe that uh, the uh, effort here by Ms. Diotis, who apparently can't be here today, uh, was to clarify her intention that the uh, amended. Um, Percentages of commercial and residential use would would apply in the WVC to all properties, not just those that are being um, dilapidated, uh, being uh, redeveloped. Okay. Motion included language uh, that would limit that change in um, the percentages of the mixed use to properties that are being redeveloped as I understand it that was not her intention is that your motion that's my motion okay. doesn't have a second yet is mr. Reese on or not on okay yes I'm here mr. Drummond okay are you making a second or no I'm not making a second. Okay. So it appears we do not have have a motion. Well, we have a motion. We don't have a second we don't have for a second. it. 
So we can't get it on the Correct. board. Okay. So I can have a, ask a question of council and or staff. I'm wondering if I should make a motion to continue this discussion. Well, one question, Mr. Drummond, can we bring this up? Can this motion come up at a later meeting or is there, is it time sensitive in some fashion? I did not uh, see anything in Robert's Rules of Order or any other parliamentary guide that said it had to be decided at the next meeting. Okay. There are some motions that do have to be considered either at the meeting at which the decision is made or at the next meeting. Uh, this one, uh, on the other hand, I would now need to look to see if a motion is made but it dies for a second, whether it can be tried again and I'm not sure you can keep trying motions until you get a second until you get a second yeah excuse me Tom I didn't mean to interrupt no no I'm I'm at a strategic impasse in my head because I'd like to discuss this but it dies on the vine if I don't make a second is that correct I'll make a second then. Okay. It's my better judgment, only to discuss the point in finer detail. Um, so we're clear. This is not. This is a that, motion to modify what happened last month. Clarify. Well, Deotis, clarify her Deotis. intention, which was that it would <coughs> not be limited to properties that are redeveloping. All the properties in the all the properties in the WVC in would then be uh, able to have a mixed use, which is 95% residential and 5% commercial. Whether they are presently improved, vacant, or run down. I'd like to ask a question of staff and or council. Then, in that light, wait a second. Go Sharon. ahead. Okay, I, I, I'm, I, I assume, I'm only relying on what she told me her motion was. Now her Sharon's motion. telling me that the minutes do not reflect that. No, she said redevelopment. I've, I've watched the tape about 10 times, I think. <laughs> okay. I can read the motion that I- Do you have to amend the minutes? Well, we sure. should. If not accurately reflected in the minutes from what was said live, I could, you want me to read? Right. I see it here. I missed it. It's there. Redevelopment of all mixed use properties. Okay. Okay, okay. so you don't have to amend okay. the minutes. Good. Sorry. Okay. All right. Now. Okay. Question of staff and or council. Is this motion as amended consistent with the comprehensive plan, in your opinion? The motion that you're making to change the motion that the was made? The amended motion. The well, answer is no. No, because you can't <laughs> make, you can't change the motion to you're just clarifying the motion that was made last month. You're not changing the motion. And right. so not it's not it's not conference. consistent with the comp. That's plan. all I need to hear. Yep. Thank you very much. What happened last month was, in staff's opinion was, was not, not correct. consistent. Thank you. That's all I want to get out on the table. Right. One could argue that this would be more inconsistent. Agreed. I said one could argue, uh, Joe. I didn't say it was. I said one could argue. So this is when you're thinking about what to, how to vote on this motion. It is whether or not, if you vote, well, we know that those that voted against it voted against it. If you're inclined to vote for this in favor of this motion, you would be agreeing that the motion that happened last month was also not your intent, which was to limit it to re uh, redevelopment projects. And that your intent was also to open the WVC generally to this change in um, percentages.
I wasn't here last month, so I'm kind of like at a loss. This this is against the, you're saying, staff is saying that this is against the comprehensive plan. Okay. All right. You ready to call for the vote? This is a vote on the motion to, to amend it. what happened last month, basically to take out the word redevelopment so that the um, text amendment would apply to all lands in the WBVC, not just those being redeveloped. Okay. I mean, the obvious example of such a redevelopment piece of property would be the outlets. Okay, all in favor to change it. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Nay. Mr. Reese, what's your vote? Nay. Okay. Okay, so it failed. Stays the way it was. Okay. Okay. Um, projects, concept plan. Mr. Johnson. Good morning. I'm Steve Johnson, County Planner. Uh, we're here to discuss project number SP number 22-04-0090, better known as Parcel 24 Holdings, LLC. Um, the applicant is proposing to construct one three-story 12-unit <laughs> residential apartment building and is requesting increased density, reduced setbacks, and concept plan approval. <clears throat> This slide gives you a general location of where the property is located. Uh, it's located in Stevensville, just north of Route 50. More specifically, map 57, parcel 24, totals 0.642 acres, and it's located at 1138 Shopping Center Road, adjacent to Colt Classic Brewing and Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, you can see Colt Classic Brewing there on the right side of your screen. Zone Town Center, and it's in the Chester Stevensville growth area. Apartment development is a permitted use in the TC zoning district. Um, it's located entirely within the critical area IDA designation. Uh, it's not located within the 100 year floodplain, and there's no natural resources on site. <clears throat> Here's a look at the existing conditions of the lot. As you can see, it's vacant with the exception of a pump house that's partially located on the parcel. Uh, that pump house serves a fire suppression system for the neighboring property. Um, there's also a fire suppression easement, system easement on this parcel as well. Mr. Johnson, that pump house you're referring to is that painted building on the left? Correct. Here's your first look at the concept plan. As you can see, it takes access from Route 18. The buildings there on the left side of the property or the west side. Um, density for apartment de development in the TC zoning district is 10 units per acre. Um, the applicant's proposing 20 units per acre. Um, in the growth area, the Planning Commission may increase density for apartment uh, development to 20 units per acre, provided the five conditions that you see on the screen are met. Um, those were discussed in your staff report, and the applicant submitted a narrative discussing those. That narrative was included in your packets. Applicant's you, proposing you to reduce could the you setback. Back up? Could oh, you back yep. up, please? Yep. Soon we're going to get some more information about number three. Correct. I know there was a standard for workforce housing in the county, but I guess we'll learn about that. Tom will address that. Okay. okay. The applicant's proposing to reduce the setback from five to 11 <clears throat> feet on the western side of the property line. That's the left side of your screen there. Uh, the design guidelines and standards encourage this reduction. Um, conceptually, all other town center development standards are met with this project. Uh, the property will be served by public water and sewer. Um, the stormwater has been reviewed and approved by DPW, and those features are conceptually shown outlined in orange. Um, there will be a 25 foot wide connection to the adjacent parcel there. Where 20 the, or 25? Or, excuse me, 20. <laughs> Pardon me. 20 foot wide connection to the adjacent parcel there where the red arrow is pointing. Um, that's encouraged by the design standards as well. Uh, 
However, this will be cordoned off by removable bollards and only accessible by emergency service vehicles and pedestrians to avoid this parking lot from becoming a shortcut between 18 and 50 in the restaurants. All required 21 parking spaces are provided on site. Um, the slide gives you a little insight into what the development would look like with the surrounding area. Uh, Could you go back to that one again, please? Sure. Okay. All right. Thanks. These are renderings for the project. This is the east view or the front Can of the back building. There one more time. Sure. <laughs> Do you have any specific there, questions? I was just between Hardy's and and the new apartment building. There isn't any kind of screening or. There will be screening along that property line between okay. the parking lot and Cult Classic. Okay. Uh, doesn't it doesn't show up very well there, but there are there are little circles there, trees uh, along that entire property line, with the exception of the. Um, the little cross hatch area you see there at the top, and this, this slide may show it better. Mm -hmm. um, that's the um, fire suppression system easement area. We don't have any trees planted in that. Okay. <clears throat> like I said, these are renderings. This is the east view. This is the front of the building. This is the northeast view, uh, sort of a view from the parking lot, front of the building as well. This is actually labeled wrong. This is the northwest view. This is the rear of the building. It's what you would see from 18. Now, there are a lot of trees along the backside of this building, so the vegetation may not be shown as accurate it is, as it is on site. This is the south view. This is what you would see from Dunkin' Donuts. Um, and with that, I'll answer any questions or turn it over to the applicant. Okay. Good morning, Commissioners. Joe Stevens. <clears throat> I represent um, Mallet Construction, um, and I have Tom Davis here who's going to go through the site plan in a little more detail, I think, and point out a few features for you. And uh, more important, um, um, Victoria Hoffman is also here, and she's going to go through, in particular, the affordable uh, workforce housing provisions and how they've come to those. As you know, Mallet Construction has done a number of these projects on Kent Island, so this isn't the first one. Um, and they've probably got the most experience in working with things like workforce housing, the MPDUs, which they have on their sites at all their lo other locations. Um, so, uh, and then I think Jimmy DiDonato is in the rear, who you know as well, and he can answer questions. So with that, I'll turn it over to Tom. Um, thank you. I just wanted to uh, point out a couple things um, in Steve's report. This property actually was developed at one time with a wastewater plant that served some of these commercial uses before the county did public sewer. And if you go back to the picture that showed the, uh, the ground view, see the manhole on the right there? That mm -hmm. was the outfall from the wastewater plant that discharged into the headwaters of Cox Creek. So if you could go back and look in the 50s and 60s, there was actually development on this property, I believe was done by David Nichols, who, if anybody knows that name, he developed a lot of these subdivisions <coughs> around here, uh, Bay City and Cloverfield, I believe. But he, he developed initially this uh, uh, commercial development where the Acme is, and there used to be a hotel here at one time um, that was torn down when uh, the Hardys and uh, what was there before Pizza Hut, there was an old hotel there at one time, a little strip, you know, one story, you know, your typical road, and, and all that wastewater came down through a plant and then was discharged into the Cox Creek. So there was development on this property in the past. But this is abandoned now, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So there, there's remnant foundation, um, impervious area that you can't really see on this, but there's some of that uh, evidence of that there still. So, if, okay, thank you. So I just wanted to point that out, there was development. So the, um, the, the issue with the uh, uh, driveway, the TC design guidelines call for interconnectivity to properties. And when we had our public meeting uh, that's required for the bonus density back in May of last year, um, there was concern by the owner of Dunkin' Donuts uh, and was also raised at stack by some of the other uh, Department of Public Works were concerned that there would be some kind of shortcut through here and it would just create a, a traffic problem so the, the proposal here is to identify that as a turnaround and an emergency access only with bollards but would also provide a pedestrian connection to the adjacent uh, commercial properties where you know patrons or i guess tenants in this building could walk to the dunkin donuts uh, you know the hardy's 
the, the bars down there, Cult Classic, and the other you know establishments in the shopping mm -hmm. center. Um, That's not a through drive then. It's not going no, to be a through no. drive. No, it'll be blocked off. And as part of it, and there, there's actually in the easement agreement uh, for the water treatment building, I believe my clients granted that easement in, in return for the pedestrian vehicular access. Uh, Jim, right, right. Jim can correct me on that. So there was a trade off when that water treatment plant uh, needs to be maintained because it, I believe it supplies emergency. Uh, fire water to uh, the cult classic and maybe other uses. I'm not 100% sure on that. And th I'll just clarify that. There is an easement that was done with Mallet Construction and the owners of the underlying property. It's not owned by cult classic. It's, it's an yeah. underlying property owners back 10 years ago where they clarified the use of the water suppression system and the ability for the owners of the Ac old former Acme property to go over onto the under the Mallard property, um, maintain their pumps and so on and so forth. And, um, uh, and uh, in exchange, there was a clarification that this property, the Mallard property, had a full easement, access easement across an undefined area. They can cross wherever there is paving and wherever there's ways to cross. So when um, Colt Classic bought their property, I assume they bought their property, they bought their property, those easements went with the... Yes, I don't know if Cult Classic owns it or not. I just, I don't know if they're the but tenants. whoever owns whoever it. Whoever owns it, yeah. it comes it's, with the easement. That's right. Okay. It came with the easement. It's in the now, I don't know what happens to the easement for the water system when public water goes down there for the, for the pump suppression pumps. If it's no longer necessary, the easement terminates for the water um, pumps but stays for the remainder of the property. Yeah, the county is currently working on a public water main extension from up near McDonald's all the way down to Shopping Center Road that may make this system obsolete if the owners of the uh, Rian Properties LLC want to connect to it and have, you know, a more reliant public water source. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we And again, we did have a public meeting where uh, the, all adjacent landowners were uh, notified to discuss the bonus, which is required by the code, and the... Um, the only person that showed up was the owner of the uh, Dunkin' Donuts, and he expressed concern about the traffic, which we've adhered to, uh, and I think he may have come to the stack meeting as well. Uh, stormwater management conceptually would be consisting of bioretention areas with some uh, pervious pavers there in the back, and then the uh, some flow-through planters up against the building. Uh, public sewers available out in uh, Maryland Route 18, so we would just make a connection to the public main. And our proposal initially was going to be to have uh, this property served by well, but now that the county is considering this public water main, we would obviously connect into that. So I think that's about all I had. We are requesting a, a setback reduction from the 15 foot required uh, by res uh, for the residential zoning district to 11, and that's to be able to free up some space in front of the building to provide some foundation landscaping very narrow site. I think it's only 110 feet wide. So uh, Jim squeezed the building down to the extent we you know, could. I would also point out if this was a commercial use, there is only a 10 foot setback along that property line. So we're still. Oh, really? Yeah. So for residential, it's 15, I believe, on the sides. And mm -hmm. commercial, it's 10 in, okay. the, in the TC district. So um, I, I don't think I have anything else unless you guys have questions for me. I just want to clarify those couple points. I'm looking forward to hearing about the um, um, affordability. One, one quick question, if I may. Um, how is the water going to be provided to this? Is it going to be by well in anticipation of the water main, or is there already we, public water available? No, the, the county is working on a design right now. It might be out the bid right now. And the county's going to construct a water, uh, eight-inch water main all the way from down near McDonald's to Shopping Center Road, which is just west of this site. And our clients would connect into it. They, okay. our clients, won't develop the property right. until that that you know public water is available. Thank you. That's yeah. fine. So you might explain a, might explain why you're here for concept plan um, rather than preliminary site plan. Yeah. Well, for two two reasons, we're requesting the uh, setback reduction and the bonus but we also need a positive recommendation to go to the county commissioners uh, for uh, award of the sewer allocation necessary for serving this project 12 edus so well it's 12 unit apartment building yep yeah. 
So, hi, I'm Victoria Hoffman. So I'll speak to you a little bit about the different kinds of housing, um, the way they're referred to in various places, because there's some confusion and overlap depending on where you look about affordability, workforce housing, moderately priced housing, and so forth, and all those things have been tossed up today, so I feel the need to clarify where we are. So in accordance with the Queen Anne's County Comprehensive Plan, the recent Comprehensive Plan, the housing section, um, they, they do identify a couple different levels of affordability. So they consider, and typically affordability is considered affordable to someone who earns 60% to 120% of the area median income. It's a pretty standard spread. And then affordability overall would be no more than 30% of that income being dedicated to their housing. So using those metrics, that is what's considered workforce housing in our comp plan refers to that spread, 60% to 120% of area median income. Affordable housing is what is affordable to under 60, those earning less than 60% of the area median income then has a different label and that's considered affordable housing. Our county requires for certain projects that provide 20 plus units, provide 10% of their units be considered moderately priced dwelling units. This is, doesn't apply to our project because of the number of units. However, we have provided them in the past, so I'll clarify that what that current process is for anyone who's interested because I know there's some question about that. So our comp plan does include those kind of requirements to try to um, make housing, affordable housing more plentiful. And before I get into that, because it's really less relevant to our project, but overall, um, Housing's a real issue in our county, as you know, and I know everyone's worried that housing will bring more business and so forth, but I contend that we need housing to service the businesses that are here now and to keep them in business. <coughs> businesses can't find employees, employees can't find a place to live, and it isn't a matter necessarily of affordability, it is simply access. There is a lack of housing in every price range, period. In accordance with the housing um, section, chapter nine of the comprehensive plan, the housing vision, in the state's land use article recommends providing a range of housing densities, types, and sizes for citizens of all ages and income. And incomes. A couple of the items of importance that apply to us is affordability, to provide inventory of rental units attainable to incomes 60 to 120% of the county AMI, which we will do with all of our units. And size and location, emphasize infill sites, which ours is, and provide easy access to good services and community facilities, preferably providing walkable community connections. This project, while residential, is part of a larger mixed-use area, and um, I, I understand that there's some concern of having residents near businesses. However, you know, different strokes for different folks. People like to live, some people like to live in a busy kind of metropolitan area. We've experienced that certainly at the promenade. The feedback we get is being able to go and do things that you want to do on a daily basis without having to get in your car and drive around is, is a benefit. Some people don't have cars. Some people can't afford gas. So having the ability to go to a restaurant, to the dentist, to get breakfast, to go um, do your banking um, from the vicinity of your home, to walk to school, to walk to work, is pretty huge. I know it doesn't appeal to everyone, but we have an issue. Um, in Queen Anne's County, according to the comprehensive plan, New construction over the past 20 years has provided only 5%, only 5% is multi, multifamily housing in our county. We are the second lowest provider of multifamily housing in the state as far as counties go. So we're not overperforming in this area. We are not, all while it, we have seen more recently apartments come into the area as a new housing type here. And it was new, it's a new housing type, you know, the code didn't even provide for it before. It was new to us um, and new things can be uncomfortable. And I understand, <coughs> uh, but the reality is people need a place to live. And, and we can't bring pricing down without bringing units in. Affordability hinges on supply, like any other economic, you know, typical economics. We don't have the supply here. So we're hoping with our units, and we try really hard to bring in nice product to um, service a variety of people. So let me get back to the MPD units so that you understand that. So as part of that for the county, uh, and again, this project at 12 units is not subject to this regulation. But moderately priced units are regulated by HUD. The pricing is regulated by HUD. It's dictated on an annual basis, and the rents are set from the HUD rents, I think for the Baltimore metropolitan area. I don't know why we're in that, that area, but we are. 
10% uh, of the units have to be provided. The residents, applicants go to the county first, to the housing department, and they get pre-qualified based on income. Uh, this is a different tier of income than your what you would understand to be tax credit or subsidized housing. That's a different income level. So this is your incomes um, in the moderate range. If they qualify, they get a they get a certificate, then they come back to and can rent, are eligible then to rent any of the moderately priced units um, that are provided in the center. And then each year, as they are re-approved each year, um, if they still qualify, then that rent continues, and it may go up or go down based on the HUD rents, which it does often go up and down. So are there any questions about that? Now, for this project, we are not required to provide any MPDU units. However, we are required to provide workforce housing units in order to qualify for the bonus, and we will be doing, and our product will be well within that range for Queen Anne's County. So you're prepared to record something that says you'll only rent to people from 60 to 120%? Required. I think you whatever, want the bonus. whatever the implementation uh, provisions are for it is what what the developer will do. So and we're only a concept plan. So we'll work with the housing department and with staff and with you, Mr. Drummond, to come up with how you okay. want to make sure that that you know that they don't that the applicant doesn't stray for that from that two three years down the line. What's the, what is immediate income now for say. let's say two people? Median income in, as on the as far as that's in the comp plan. That's written in the comp plan. Okay. What does it say? I don't remember. $97,034. For two people or for a family? It doesn't qualify households. So I don't know how many people are in the household. But that's a household, so you, it's not that's, an individual. That's what it is. So that range then goes from those households making 58000 up to 116000 so, so to be honest, though, your, your, the range of affordability in Queen Anne's County, as you can tell by that number, is pretty high. Yeah. Our rents fall. For almost certainly toward the lower half of that range of housing. You calculate the 30 percent. Right. Yeah. Yes. I think that I think that median income is like two or three in the state, or I think we're behind like Howard County and. The state, I think, is um, in the mid 60s, right, if uh, I'm not mistaken. And I think, um, I think Howard County and maybe one other county is higher than Queen Anne's. For what? Median income. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the diversity of <clears throat> housing in the county. That's what it's using. Okay. Do any questions from the commissioners? I actually do, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, probably for Mr. Davis. Looking at the uh, sheet that's on the screen, the, um, that number five hatched area in the lower corner, are there some different type of pavement, or is That's that going to be pervious pavers? Pervious so, pavers. as part of a part of our stormwater. Storm yeah. yeah. and, and again, it's concept. So if we can design something, um, you know, when we get into the engineering, they they may go away. But right now, we needed that to meet our volume requirements for the uh, oh, ESD. Okay. So. And then, is there any screening around the uh, trash enclosure? A typical a fence around the. Um, the enclosure, and then we also have a fence along the uh, back property line. Oh, screening um, fence. I see that now. So that's. So it's kind of a double fence. That screening fence will be a solid ish. Uh, we haven't right defined what the detail so. of it is, but it, I mean, it wouldn't be a chain link fence yeah, yeah, or anything okay. like that, no. And uh, there's a, also an, a fence would be around the trash enclosure as well. back to Steve's arrow I think the pavement of the Dunkin Donuts goes very close up to that property line yeah, I think it's right up to it yeah pretty close mm -hmm. there's no you know there's no landscaping on the Dunkin Donuts site that I'm, I'm aware of and with respect to sewer allocations you're not asking for much but we've already had discussions on numerous faces about availability and capacity how do you address that with your position of asking for 12 units you said well, we have to present it to the county commissioners you know if we um, receive actually, concept plan approval not. you're going to be under that right just no, I think that, I, what's the number of thousand gallons i think we're i think we have to that's not an administrative thing by alan it's over a thousand over a thousand is not administrative so we're, okay. we're in, you know so okay this will be what's the what's the allocation for apartments? Uh, it's 
varies on the bedrooms. It's either 100. I think we're just slightly over 1,000 gallons total. Yeah. <clears throat> Trey Porter is online if you have specific questions regarding that. Uh, it just, it's the, it's the, it's the grill up, right? John got a new clock. We need a grill painted on the wall. So you just point to the grill and say, <laughs> well, how are you going to address that sewer? Uh, because it comes up every time and it seems seemingly gets sort of redirected or... I believe that the county... It's, it's, it's becoming a little bit concerning to me because I wholeheartedly agree with Mrs. Hoffman's testimony and, and Mr. Donato, they have a their business has a history of being the leader in MPDUs and moderately... They, I'm probably the only ones. Jimmy, he, I think I've had conversations with trying to learn how to understand MPDUs, and he loves them. Their business model loves them because they sell, and they get filled up quickly. <coughs> and when somebody moves out, somebody, am I paraphrasing correctly? Um, but we're about to hear another con, or a, a site from Mr. Azar that's asking for more. So we're, we're giving out more capacity this morning than we already have. Well, let's, let, let me go back on th this one. We're, at, we're requesting it. David has already been awarded his. Okay. We went to the county commissioners, and as after we uh, received concept plan approval last year, we went to the county commissioners, and they've made the commitment, and he's paid the down po uh, yep. deposit. But I also understand the county's doing some things at the wastewater plant that may free up allocation, and I don't know the specifics. It's some. Uh, some well, okay. Recertification. I don't, Hold on. I don't know. Hold on. But I, we knew there was that was going to come up. There is an effort to re-rate the, the plant to have some additional <clears throat> capacity, and we expect there to be an, a, a stampede right. uh, once that happens. Uh, <laughs> that <laughs> we, let's we, we could stop the stampede right now because there is a policy under uh, a new policy for allocation that is being um, vetted right now that will uh, allocate that, if the re-rating happens, will allocate the, the additional capacity in certain ways. So let's wait for the allocation policy well, to be revised before the stampede starts. And I, regardless of that, this is an infill property. I mean, it's a, the only vacant parcel in this whole block of. Oh, it's you know, it's right. So, so you're, you're you know, so, so we'll, we'll have to make the pitch to the, I, you know, the commissioners. I, I, yeah, well, that's the, that, that's the thing. Just like Mr. Drummond's saying, the commissioners are not. I mean, they're the keepers of the allocation. You all review the concept plan for consistency with the plan and the design guidelines and, you know, and all those things. And then you make a recommendation about, yes, this plan is, is approvable. And, and it goes up to them. Then they're the keeper of that gate. And they're, as Mr. Drummond says, they're not, you know, there's no... Um, um, there's no guarantees. And, th and there's no ignoring the issue, the gorilla oh, no. in the room. Right. They're, they're on top of that. And, and, and um, uh, Mr. DiNonato and, and, and Victoria Hoffman will have to wait in line, and, and they'll make their application. This is a smaller amount, as we know, and, and it's got some real attributes. So they I understand mostly that. made that little speech for Joe and Tom, uh, uh, not so much on this project, because we know there's going to the, the expectation. Yes, talking. Yeah, because we know there's this expectation if you get an extra 300,000 gallons, then we're coming in with our projects, and there's going to be a managed approach to it, so don't get your hopes up. <laughs> and as I understand it now in the comp plan, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I think I saw so many drafts, I don't know what, what's in the final comp plan, to be honest on this, but I do think it said that sanitary would be reserved and allocated right now at least to commercial and infill property, so if you'll... As an infill project, at least we call it, you know, we do our, our in keeping, our request is in keeping with what the comp plan says currently and what's available currently. Any more? I do not have any more. I don't think we do. Any more questions? Okay, so public comment. Is Jeff? Jeff, did you have a question? Let me, guys. Jeffrey? Yes, I did have a question. Okay. Thank you, Madam oh. Chair. Um, um, I have technical difficulties I'm in an auto shop currently. Um, but my question for the applicant is how many of the affordable units in all the buildings that you've constructed are still affordable? And how many units did you pay fee in lieu uh, versus keeping the units affordable? You're asking about MPDUs. So, Zero, I think. two things. Um, all of the units that we presently have leased on Ken Island fall within what is considered workforce housing as defined in the comp plan currently. 
from the beginning till now. We anticipate for a long, long time because our, the range, like I had mentioned, is quite high. So we, are, we sort of nestle in at the lower end of the range to begin with. Um, we provide of those units currently 14 moderately priced dwelling units, which are deed restricted as accordingly for I think it's 25 years. We're getting ready to put six more MPD units into service. We'll have a tw total of 20 MPDU units. Those are priced below market, um, below what is, and they are more in the affordable housing pricing range versus the workforce housing pricing range. Does that answer your question? And, you, and, you and we paid. have not paid any fees in lieu because um, the MPDU program for rentals is really, really works well. Uh, what I think the fee in lieu is often uh, when they're trying to apply MPDU to a single family a sale situation, which is much more complex. Or and, townhouses. Or townhouses. And I don't believe that that's been done successfully uh, outside of the fee in lieu yet. Not, in the county. It has not worked well for the sale of right. residences. There's a lot it, more to consider there yeah. with resident and owning a home and maintaining a home versus renting a unit. Did that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you very much. Public comment. Let's see, Liam Shanley. Uh, my comments regard both the projects that are being proposed. Uh, would it be possible for me to wait after the second one is discussed? No, because you need it up now okay. to have it count for this one. All right, that's fine. Okay. Well, my name is Liam Shanley. I'm a lifelong resident of Ken Island, and I'm here because not only do I oppose this project, but the one coming after this as well. Uh, we have 11 new apartments that were approved by this council last year being built on my road, Dundee Avenue. There are also currently 60 being built on Postal Road. None of these apartments are yet finished or occupied. Uh, but we need 33 new apartments, the 21 that are being discussed here and the rest of them that are coming up. Um, we have Red Apple Town Center apartments on Shamrock Road, the Four Seasons Community off of Castle Marina Road, Chesapeake Village Center apartments on Main Street Route 18, and Ellendale Townhouses and the Baybridge Cove Community uh, down Route 8 South. All of these are recent developments. All of these developments equal more traffic. All diverging roads converge onto Route 18. These recent developments have added un hundreds of new cars to the roads. The apartments still being built and not yet occupied, combined with those being proposed today, would create even more traffic. Summer again is upon us, and to my knowledge, there's still no solution to keep Route 50 traffic off of Route 18. Uh, couple these new residents on the road with the Route 50 beach traffic that floods Route 18 every year, we can expect traffic will be much worse. It will be even worse with these new added apartments. We are, in the summer, we are gridlocked and residents cannot leave their houses or go anywhere on the island on the weekends. Also, all this traffic hinders emergency access and response time, so why make any of this worse? Uh, Kent Island also is not just the name of where we live. It is an actual island. You know, there is limited space and resources left. What we should be doing now is being proactive to protect and preserve those resources. We need only look at the island south of us to see that increased inland flooding and shoreline loss are our future. Uh, space is a commodity we do not have much left of. Approving these and future projects like them would be taking this precious commodity away from us. These projects do not benefit Kent Island or its residents in any way. Approving them also sets the precedent that nothing is off limits to developers and that no land is safe. Um, also, when you cross, route, uh, cross the Bay Bridge and enter Kent Island, Route 18 is the beginning of the Eastern Shore's scenic byways. <laughs> where open spaces and farmland once were, are now to be filled with ugly, soulless, cut and paste apartment buildings and retail stores. This will be what our scenic byway is, and I ask you, how is that scenic? Uh, these proposed projects detract from the beauty Kent Island still has. We live on the Eastern Shore for a reason, and that's because it is not the Western Time's Shore. Up. Time's up, thank you. All right, thank you. <laughs> Rory Flood, I think that, is that pronounced properly? 
Okay. Uh, Planning Commission, in the spirit of being neighborly, I hope to have it on record for any future tenants what they may hope to expect living alongside their new neighbors, a brewery and a grocery store. Since we, and I mean all of us in this cast, rehabilitated the old Acme, which had become a blight to the county over almost a decade of abandonment and decay, and opened our doors five years ago, we have continually provided a home for arts and entertainment, a meeting space for friends and family, and comfort and a return to normality for thousands of citizens at our 100 plus annual events in the West Lot. We sincerely hope to continue the service. Lot, what, do you, what do you mean, the West Lot? The West parking lot that is adjacent to this project. Okay. Between the two. Okay. Between them. All right. Um, we sincerely hope to continue this service to the community, and in doing so, would like to address some of our routines so that the folks who move in next door know what it's like to be our neighbors. Some of our quirkier habits include live music outdoors several times a month, including a few large-scale festivals and sometimes super popular bands that have toured for decades that perform some of their final shows right in our parking lot, and I can't go into further details at the moment. A weekly farmer's market that brings in hundreds of people to interact with our local growers. Seasonal car shows and every other Tuesday car meets that go vroom very loud. Mural artists and that elusive vandal working nonstop to paint the town at all hours. Various sporting and athletic competitions including cornhole, um, honey I shrunk the kids pong, paddling, cycling, jeeping, etc. Infinite community fundraisers including Santa Con, the Dark Hollows Haunted Trail, the Eastern Shore Lane Conservatory, Land Jam as well as benefits for local sports groups and donation drives of every shape and size. Also, we brew beer, lots of beer. Come by on a brew day, usually around 4 a.m., and make sure you love the smell of beer after a boil. Our brewer and owner has, in fact, converted to nocturnalism out of the graciousness of his heart. He chooses to boil in the wee hours before the sun rises so as to spare the neighbors during business hours. Uh, we have lots of friends, so the parking lot is always packed, almost nightly for our enter entertainment events. As we finalize plans for Ken Island's first national music venue, the Grand Old Hoppy Future Trademark, we anticipate the frequency increasing. We have lots of tractor trailer visitors as well, not just our endless parade of deliveries seven days a week, also the ones who still think the service exit is a truck stop. Sometimes you look out the window on a good Tuesday morning and you think you're watching maximum overdrive. Lastly, we all need an occasional dumpster fire. I know all this sounds like an ad for the best place to live ever, but we all have to sleep at night at some point, and this place breathes almost all day every day and into the night seven days a week. We are closed for Thanksgiving and Christmas. We just like the record to show that we've worked hard to bring people together in this space, a space that was once abandoned for the better part of a decade, a space that few saw value in, that a few small, uh, that a group of small folks believed in an idea and that that group grew the idea and that idea now serves tens of thousands of people a year. We hope this project can be discussed further before ground is broken so we can find a way to continue to bring keep people together through arts, entertainment, charities, community, fundraisers, weddings, retirements, and all the things we celebrate that make up life. Cheers. Thank you. Josh Willis. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Josh Willis. I'm a lifelong resident of Ken Island, a local business owner, and I'm also here representing Historic Ken Island Incorporated. In 1920, shortly after Route 18 was designed and constructed, there were 16,000 residents in all of Queen Anne's County. This was 30 years before the first Bay Bridge would introduce a population boom on the island. Fast forward to today, <clears throat> 2023, and Ken Island now hosts a population of almost 13,000. If you throw Graysonville in the mix because they also use Route 18, now we're looking at a population of over 16,000, which obviously is more than what the entire county had when Route 18 was constructed. It was never designed or intended to see this use and congestion that it sees today. You might even notice that if you live on Ken Island from all of the summer traffic that we experience every single weekend, which causes gridlock and locks people in their houses and they're not able to get out. They're also not able to support local business, one of them being called Classic. <clears throat> if you continue adding to the population of Kent Island, that defeats the, the purpose of people going out and using the commercial assets that we have around. I feel personally, since the sewer is technically set aside right now for commercial use only, that that's exactly what it should be intended for because we have emergencies that arrive, we have new schools that may need to be built, government buildings. I don't see the purpose in adding residents into the sewer when we already have a population that clearly exceeds what the road use can handle. Also with that, I heard from someone that the residential apartments are considered a commercial entity, but after speaking with Alan Quimby, the director of public works, he said that's not actually the case, that the code reads that this is not 
technically allowed. It's an interpretation of the code, which the county commissioners have interpreted before, but the planning commission is obviously the ones hearing this. Now, I also heard that there used to be a hotel or something else on this property, which did exist about 50 years ago, 30 to 50 years ago, but just because it existed then doesn't mean it should exist today because what was the population back then? What was our sewer capacity back then? Also, the fact that you may not or you, you should not take into consideration the sewer, that the county commissioners are the actual gatekeepers of this, seems wrong. If you are the planners and you are accepting plans and you are looking at the safety and the sewer and everything else that is involved in these plans, because all of these plans are going to utilize the sewer, then I find it questionable as to why you shouldn't take the, the sewer into consideration when you are making these plans. So, like I said, I'm a lifelong resident. For the last, I'm th I just turned 39. So. My entire life, I've watched this island change. Landmarks have disappeared. Recently, I grew up on Cox Neck Road, and recently, uh, Di Donato built all those apartments. That was my home. That was everything I remember as a child. All the fields that I've played in, all the trails that I've taken my bicycle on, they're all gone. Our children aren't going to see the exact same things that we saw. People move over to the eastern shore, specifically Ken Island, for that reason, and that reason's quickly disappearing. So please take that into consideration. Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> Raleigh Northrop. Yes, hi. Um, my name's Riley Northrop. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Queen Anne's County. Um, I grew up right in Graysonville, Queenstown area, and I graduated from Ken Island High School. And I strongly oppose this project, um, mainly because of the definition of workforce housing being 60 to 120% of um, essentially what people are considered to be able to afford. And I don't think that this really brings the people into the county that we need, which are younger people and people that don't really have the ability to make $60,000 a year or $58,000 a year, which was considered that, um, that stipulation for the housing. Um, because teachers aren't able to afford this. Most young people that are my age are not working jobs where they're able to afford this housing. And subsequently, a lot of those people are leaving our county and then we're left with people who are not providing to any sort of culture in our county whatsoever. Um, yes, that's Okay, about thank it. you. Yeah. Uh, any more discussion? Anybody else want to have one, I do have one person on Zoom who wants to speak specifically about this uh, this concept plan. Um, I think it's last name Vasek, Vasek. Valerie, if you're there, could you turn your camera on, and unmute yourself, and you have what, three minutes. Hi there. Uh, my name is Shit. Valerie Vasek. I'm an island resident, and um, I'm against this project. Um, I don't want any more housing built on the island. We already have a tough enough time getting anywhere we need to, and as I could before, this will just increase traffic. Um, last year specifically, my son had an emergency issue and with it being summertime, we could not get from where we live down Route 8 up to any emergency areas. Um, we had to sit in traffic and wait while he was having an emergency and it was not ideal. Um, I don't see how, again, building more homes and creating more traffic will help anyone who lives here um, because we're stuck in our homes. Uh, we can't get to where we need to. Um, oftentimes I can't even get up to the store to get milk if there's an accident because there are people who are coming in, they don't know how to drive, um, causing accidents at the Bay Bridge. Um, we have our son in sports. Sometimes he can't get to his sporting events because of traffic. So I'm just not sure how um, creating more traffic is gonna help us at all, um, the residents who live here. And in addition to that, um, we use the farmer's market that's next to Cult Classic um, on a weekly basis. And a lot of children play in that area where you're planning on building apartment homes. Um, so I guess my question would be, if there's more traffic there, more cars there, how is that gonna be safe for the community? And that's all I have, thank you. Okay, thank you. Now, the emails, um, we have about, that's about 30, um, but the majority of them are for both. Did you want me to save those for the end? 
because pretty much every email that I've gotten is basically talking about both the concept plan and the next one that's coming up as well. Is it a form email? No, no, they're, 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 I don't think I even have any form emails this time. It looks like they're all just their specific um, responses, but for both of the uh, plans today. And I think they have to be presented before the first one's finished in order to be counted. Okay. Yeah, because I can, our... I will read them right now then. Okay. That's cool with you? Okay, cool. I'm going to take a five minute break.
Ready? Yep. I think we're good. Okay, meeting's back in order. So instead of reading 30 emails, yes. can you summarize whether they're nay, um, for, or, and their names? Yeah. And okay. where they're located? Copy that. So what I'll do is I'll just go through the emails because they've got their names, obviously, and where they're located. Um, but in basically summarizing the emails that were received, all are against. Um, we have one that basically is just speaking about giving like housing statistics, saying that there is a need for affordable housing in the in the area. But that was that was the base of that email. The rest of them are all against both either one or both of the plans. Um, and they mostly speak about obviously traffic, um, emergency concerns, um, and just general way of life, which is all things that have been spoken about t here today. Um, and those people who are against, I'll just start from the bottom. Uh, we have a Teresa Correa of What about Chester. the one that's for, how about? Oh, you want to start with that? We'll start with that one. That one who was just speaking about, it was just speaking about um, uh, having affordable housing. That is Ms. Sheena Van Orem. She does not say where she is from. Oh, Stevensville. Sheena Van Orem. She lives in Stevensville. And she's speaking about the need for moderately pricing homes here in the county. Now, as for the people who have listed who are against either one or both, and like I said, the majority, I'd say about 98% are for, against both. Um, we started with uh, Ms. Teresa Correa from Chester, Maryland. Then we have a Dina Scalia, a Kent Island resident. We have a Paul Lombardo, who did not say where he's from. And let's see, we have a... Bike doctor. He's a what? He's a bike doctor. Oh, okay. He's a bike doctor. Okay, there you go. So we all know where he lives then. Um, we have a Linda Henley. It was just a Topside Drive. I don't know where that is, but Topside Drive. Chester, there you go, Topside. I should have him up here with me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Vanna. Um, we have a Bonnie Nelson from Graysonville. We have an Allison McIntosh from Stevensville. And we have a Mike Newman who is from Stevensville. Uh, we have Sheila Willis, who is from somewhere, not in the email. Chester. Chester. I have two Vannas. This is great. <laughs> uh, I have a Melissa Ross, who is from Ken Island. Uh, let's see. Uh, keep going here. We have a Travis Swanger from Kent Island. Terry Haley, Kent Island resident. Kathy Lowe, Kent Island resident. They Kathy Northrop, Queen Anne's County resident. A Bob. Can you go back to Lowe a second? How is that spelled? Lowe, L-O-W-E. Okay. Mm -hmm. So go back to uh, we have a Bob Willis. Okay, there was another Willis. Is that is that a word? Chester? Chester. <laughs> we have a winner. <laughs> uh, we have a Kirk Marks, Kent Island resident. Jacob M., Jacob Merton, Kent Island, for roughly 21 years. Uh, Erica Kriegsich, Kree, Krieg, Krieg, Krieg 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 I apologize if that was butchered. Kent Island resident. Amanda Stafford, Chester, Maryland. Karen Williams, Kent Island resident. Uh, almost there, don't worry. We have a Diane Bedlin, Kent Island resident. Heather Begore. Sincerely, she's a first responder, Ken Island resident. Sheila Rupert, and, oh, Ken Island resident. A Jenna Red, Ken Island resident. Jennifer Ludwig, Ken Island resident. Whoa, what was that one? Centerville. Oh, I thought it said, oh, I see. I just saw, I, we love Kent Island. I apologize for that. But yeah, you love Ken Island, but they're from Centerville. Um, historic Ken Island, I'm guessing that's Ken Island resident. Uh, Mr. Willis back there. <laughs> so Chester, um, Jennifer Barrick. Uh, oh, Kent, oh, yes, a resident of Kent Island. Mr. Willis again. Stevensville resident, Mr. Eric Geiger. And there's Miss uh, Van Orem. And then our final one that came in this morning is uh, Sherry DiPietro, Kent Island resident. And that's it. Those Thank are you. all for, against. Thank you. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, can I, um, any other discussions? 
Can I get a motion? I'd say there's an animation. <laughs> now what, Tonto? Is Mr. Reese still with us? I am. Okay. So there's no motion for this project. Let's go to major site plan, uh, Chesapeake Square. I think some action needs to be taken here. Well, what do you do? I don't know. I have if to you think don't about have a it. Uh, is there a possibility of tabling it for a future sure. consideration? Of course. Um, not sure. Well, yes. Table for next month. Why you would do that, but you have that option. So I, th <clears throat> I think that, in fairness to the applicant and those in attendance, if uh, enough concerns have been raised to the level that a motion isn't going to move forward um, based on the applicant's submittal in the context of what you've heard today, that it would be advisable to go through. Um, the staff report or uh, the items that have been brought up and put forward your areas of concern so that the applicant knows what you'd like to have addressed to bring this conceptual plan back. And just a reminder that this is a yeah, concept say, plan. This is a concept plan. This, this is, isn't a final so vote. Concept plan is intended to, um, is not intended to approve the project. It's intended to indicate to the applicant and others that may be interested that it's capable of being approved because it meets, at least initially, uh, the um, broad stroke, so to speak, of the zoning code. There are any number of matters which would have to be satisfied uh, before the, a project such as this comes back for site plan approval. Um, uh, this uh, concept plan does not, is not intended to address things like uh, the potential for um, Route 8 to become overburdened by, the, by this project. That would be addressed in more detail if it is appropriate if, by a traffic engineer, if that seems appropriate, um, at site plan. Um, obviously, a requirement before site plan can be considered is that you be able to flush the toilets and the, and the wastewater goes somewhere. That's the, the sewer allocation, that they, they need this to go to the next step for sewer allocation. If they don't get sewer allocation, you'll never see this project again. So the question for concept plan is, does it appear to meet the general requirements of the zoning code so that, for example, the Sanitary Commission can then decide whether or not to grant allocation. If it doesn't even come close to meeting the requirements of the Zoning Code, there's no point in wasting the Sanitary Commission's time, is the pur purpose of concept plan. It doesn't approve anything. Um, Hargeting back to the beginning of the meeting during the staff report section when Steve outlined the extra layer of review and the uh, nine additional findings that you will have to make, say, for the next project, which is a uh, final site plan review. Um, just a contemplation that there is a heavier lift and there are uh, clearer findings that have to be worked out and consistency has to be ironed out when you get to the next level. So if it might make you more comfortable looking at your staff report, um, for uh, the next site plan um, and, 
in relation to what you're looking at for a concept that might give you a level of comfort with how you might want to proceed if you want to proceed with a concept review and the kinds of comments that you still can give um, in terms of asking the applicant to consider even through a concept approval if you were so inclined. You can still outline your areas of concern. Uh, keeping in I mind that you... I think it's fair to say that the Planning Commission has an obligation to do something. If I was representing an applicant in such a situation and, and nobody did anything at the Planning Commission, I'd probably go to court and say, uh, I mean, it'd probably be a mandamus action and it would say, they got to do something, Judge. Order them to do something. Whether they're going to agree with me or not, they should do something. Okay. That being said, guys, somebody's got to belly up to the bar. May I say something? No. Okay, I just believe in the United no. States if there's no motion, then it should fail. No. Let's go again. Can I get a motion? Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Let's move our day along. Resolve the Planning Commission regarding the request by Mallard Construction Group LLC for approval of an increased density under 181-28D 2A1F to construct one three-story 12-unit residential apartment building with density of up to 20 units per acre. And is more particularly described in planning zoning file SP22. 040090 hereby finds the site area does not exceed five acres. Two, architectural elevations have been provided that are compatible with the surrounding development. Three, apartment development will provide workforce age restricted and, excuse me, or other moderately priced housing. Four, landscaping is provided for screening. The adjacent commercial properties and five, a public meeting was conducted and hereby grants the increase in density for up to 20 units per acre. Is this one motion or is it three separate? Three separate. Okay, so I'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Second. Aye. Second. I'll second. Okay, we got a second. Okay. You want to continue? You're going to take a vote? I we did. Think, I oh. did. Well, we better do it again because I right. see it was All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Okay. Reduce setbacks. Resolved the Planning Commission regarding the request by Mallet Construction Group LLC to reduce the side setback from 15 feet to 11 feet along the western property line under 18128D1 and 18128D5B. And as more particularly described, planning zoning file SP2204090 hereby finds a reduced set setback would be consistent with the properties in the vicinity of the subject parcel. Uh, as per uh, staff report, I'll uh, find that detail. That, uh, excuse me, applicant testimony, specifically Mr. Davis, who outlined the delta between residential and commercial buildings. Does that make sense? The, 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 Tom said that uh, if it was residential, it would be 10. If it was commercial, 15. Backwards. Backwards, sorry. You got that, Sharon? Um, and we're asking for, they're asking for 11. Yeah. Right. Well, between setback from 15 to 11, correct. Right. And hereby grants the reduced setback. Right. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, Planning Commission recording, excuse me, regarding the request by Mallard Construction Group LLC for concept plan approval to construct one three-story 12-unit residential apartment building is more particularly described in the Department of Planning Zoning file. 20, SP 2204090 hereby finds the concept plan is consistent with the goals and objectives of Queen Anne's County Zoning and Subdivision Regulations and the 22 Comprehensive Plan as per the staff report. Uh, uh, um, comprehensive uh, detailed future land use identifies the property as commercial and mixed use and is being located within Chester, Still, Chester Stevensville planning area. Sanitary sewer services that identifies the property as S1 current service area and the applicant is providing proposing development that meets the TCUC design standards which require that proposed development complements existing buildings and community character. And hereby grants concept approval, approval for the following conditions. One, any remaining edits and or documents be required by a reviewing agency, comma, the Department of Public Works or Planning and Zoning be reviewed and approved. Second. Second. All in favor? 
Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Was that an opposition? It's no, he said aye. Oh, he said aye. Okay. But it was after she had said opposed. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner. Major site plan, Chesapeake Square. Stay right here. <laughs> and once again, I'm Steve Johnson, County Planner, Planning and Zoning. Uh, we're here to discuss SP number 23 02 0100 or Chesapeake Square. Um, the applicant is proposing to construct two three story, 21 unit residential apartment buildings in a 232 square foot pavilion, and they are requesting major site plan approval today. Slide gives you general location. Um, it's located in Chester, uh, north of 50. More specifically, uh, tax map 57, parcel 481, totals 2.134 acres. Uh, it's located between the Friendlies and Queenstown Bank. Friendlies can be seen on the left, and the Queenstown Bank is on the right on your screen there. It's currently identified as Island Professional Park. Zoned Town Center. Uh, it's in the Chester Stevensville growth area apartment development once again is permitted use in town center here's the existing conditions you can see the tiki huts out there this is looking northeast uh, this is looking northwest you can see the friendly building there at the left side of the screen <clears throat> here's a look at the site plan you can see entries or access is taken from uh, route 18 service road building number one is up front building two is in the rear and the pavilions behind building two <clears throat> in June of last year, this commission granted bonus density uh, concept approval uh, for 20 units per acre, uh, hence the 42 units that are proposed today. Uh, four of these units will be moderately priced units. Uh, the APFO administrator uh, has indicated that adequate capacity exists for this project and a some correspondence was included in your packets. <clears throat> All TC development standards have been met. This includes height, setbacks, and pervious landscaping. Um, the property will be served by public water and sewer. Um, an existing well will be abandoned in accordance with environmental health requirements. And the all parking, all 78 required parking spaces uh, are provided on site. Um, before I get started on this, every circle that you see on this screen is a planting, uh, so you get an idea of how much planting will be on this site. Um, 0.536 acres of this parcel in critical area. The critical area LDA line is shown here by the dash yellow. Everything kind of on the inside of that towards the upper right of your screen is critical area. The parcel is legally nonconforming regarding lot coverage uh, in the critical area. Um, this project will actually reduce the lot coverage by 0 0.053 acres on the parcel. Um, parcel is not located in the flood plain. Um, there's no natural resources on, resources on site. Uh, stormwater has been reviewed and approved by DPW. And those features are outlined here in orange. Uh, forest conservation requirements on site will be met by the planting of a 0.24 acre afforestation area shown here in green. Uh, that area will also be used as screening uh, from the neighboring bank. Uh, critical area afforestation requirements will be met by the planting of a 0 0.08 acre area, which is the fuchsia area at the upper right of your screen. <clears throat> Both of these areas will be placed in long-term protection. Here's an idea of how the proposed development will fit in with the surrounding area. Um, here's an even wider view of that development. These are renderings. This is looking northwest from Route 18 into the proposed development. Building one's there on your left in the foreground there, and building two's in the background. Uh, this is looking southeast behind building two. You can see building one in the corner there off to the right. Uh, this is looking southwest. This is the entry to building one looking towards uh, Route 18 from the parking lot. Um, this is looking northeast um, at building number one. So the, the, front facing side of the building towards the road. 
<clears throat> this is a bird's eye view of the property. I have to note that the vegetation that you see surrounding this doesn't exist. Um, and here's another view of that. Um, this is a look at the pavilion and what the amenities that will be involved in that. It's a barbecue grill, bench, tables. Uh, there is a passive recreation area around this behind building number two. <clears throat> and this is in here. This is Chesapeake Village Center. Mr. Azar built this project. It was approved in 2016, um, and it was deemed to meet the TCUC design standards. This, this project's very similar in design to this. Um, and um, with that, I'll turn it over to the applicant, but I did want to remind you this is the project that features the changes to the resolution portion of the staff report, just so you're aware. And yep, it's for final site plan approval. Mr. Johnson, for clarification, you, re you suggested, I just want to make sure I heard it properly, that this redevelopment of this property would actually reduce impervious cover on that lot? It will reduce impervious cover within the critical area. Within critical area, yep. thank you. Uh, Tom Davis with DMS and Associates again uh, representing uh, Chesapeake Square. This is David Azar. He's a developer. Um, he and his wife Kim is back here, purchased the property. Um, as uh, Steve indicated, the property is currently improved with the called the Island Professional. I call them the Zulu huts. They're like octagonal mm -hmm. buildings that are in a very <coughs> state of uh, disrepair. Uh, the property was developed back in 1985 or 86 with those buildings on it uh, by, Ms. Rosendale. by Ms. Rosendale. It was actually one of the first projects I worked on when I got out of college, so I'm very familiar with that. Um, the site will serve with public sewer. At the time, uh, the development was being proposed. Critical area law was just coming into play, 85, 86 time period, and we actually had to do findings of fact back in this. This property should have been entirely identified uh, IDA, but there's a small portion in the back that's uh, LDA, and we uh, have it here to the because uh, uh, impervious cover was built under that site plan that exceeded the 15%, as Steve indicated. Um, so we are not, uh, we're actually slightly reducing that, and then we're bringing it into compliance with uh, the forest uh, plantings in the critical area. 15% of the LDA has to be planted. That's that fuchsia, magenta colored planting area and then we also are subject to a forest conservation ordinance which is the green green plantings and then the rest of the landscaping are all uh, required of uh, chapter 14 uh, landscape buffers parking lot landscaping and so on um, the site is currently served with an existing stormwater system that doesn't meet today's ESD to the MEP it was just a hole in the ground with an outlet structure and Basically, through the work with DPW, we showed that with these new uh, bioretention areas, which are shown in the orange, the volume provided for uh, treatment well exceeds the pond that was designed back in 85, 86. The regulations have you know, changed, obviously, since then. Uh, there's currently a state highway access that will be removed, and the new entrance will be just shifted along uh, Route 18 to serve the community, uh, as Steve indicated. Uh, concept plan was granted uh, there last year. The bonus was granted, and uh, Dave has actually secured the uh, sewer allocation commitment from the county commissioners, uh, paid the deposit. Uh, we'll have to you know, pay the remainder once uh, we're ready to go for unconditional uh, you know, site plan approval for getting bonds, fees. You only have one way in and out? Yes. Okay. And it's, we've met with uh, Jeff Morgan, who's the fire marshal, and this loop scenario is okay with him because it provides access for the fire trucks getting in and out. Um, we've actually met with the uh, fire department, Canal Island Fire Department Chief Thomas, uh, to review this. Uh, we modified some of our design to accommodate ladder areas along the fronts of building, the front of building one and the back of building two, uh, so that it, you know if somebody needed to get a ladder up to those balconies, that there was nothing obtruding that. So we've met with them and we've addressed the you know that condition. Uh, so at pretty much all of the agencies are in support of this. We've uh, gone through uh, a detailed review with uh, Planning and Zoning, Department of Public Works, Sanitary District, and uh, another thing I, I did want to, we were originally going to uh, have uh, to extend the water, and I, I think I mentioned in the previous project, a county is actually uh, extending the water from McDonald's, which is just to the bottom of this site, and then going all the way up to Ken Island Shopping Center, 
and shopping center road so we'll connect into that once it's uh, installed which I believe is sometime this fall uh, so it'd be public sewer public water all those infrastructure have been uh, addressed through an APFS which I think Steve indicated that that was in your packet that we did have uh, adequate public facilities approval for sewer water roads and also schools um, be glad to answer any questions I, I believe we meet all the requirements of your uh, the comp plan um, again this was uh, discussed you know, last year in a conceptual plan uh, approval be glad to answer any questions well, I did ask the Didonados about how the county would be assured that the um, uh, tenants are uh, in the workforce housing strata, uh, which is uh, which we learned from Ms. Hoffman. It was 60 to 110, or was it 110 percent of uh, median? 60 to 100. 100. I don't remember. Don't we need some way to enforce that? I guess if the county comes, and we don't up, want a bunch of I, I don't know millionaires if running kind of legal the point. done to date. But Pardon me? I don't know that the county's. Uh, well, we haven't had a whole lot of uh, straight yeah. apartments that are so-called workforce housing. We've had commercial apartments, uh, but we haven't had a whole lot of straight apartments that got a density bonus, in part because they will be workforce housing. So we need a method by which we can be sure that the tenants are are actually within that strata you follow me I do and I believe that we do have a system in place okay. and I believe that does entail um, a deed restricted agreement between that is reviewed by our Department of Housing okay. and our zoning administrator and that is recorded and then I'm sure that's a condition I do believe that there is a system in place. Okay. I wasn't aware of that. Chris, I do include a condition in the staff report saying okay, they good. need to provide information. All right, good. And we would certainly comply with that. I guess so. I mean, if it's from 58,000 mm -hmm. to 120,000, that's. <laughs> you shouldn't have any problem finding tenants in that range. <laughs> As with the um, previous project we did have a community meeting uh, last year sometime and uh, actually nobody showed Queenstown banks on one neighbor it's the convenience store on the other uh, Western Auto across the street and nobody had any concerns um, you know again with what we talked about earlier these housing units will provide uh, you know, support for employees for some of the businesses in the area it's uh, we provided a, a sidewalk connection along the road so that if they wanted to walk over to the uh, convenience store that that's available like I said there's Western Auto across the street McDonald's a couple other you know food services in the area that people can walk to from this um, I'm pretty sure sure that you know are you building a screen again like you did the last set so the we are not going to go to the concrete level but we will be concentrating on energy efficiency yeah because you brought in some samples or that, that construction method i think it was your concrete at the village center so that's yeah. correct yeah. But you're, uh, you were pleased with that right and still we're pleased are. with it the uh, as you can all imagine covid changed a lot of the workforce throughout the United States oh and ICF construction which went through with the time constraints yeah. on that job so the ICF construction industry is is just not ready for what we would like it to be ready for with that being said high efficiency is will be shown because that that's it all it's all about the end user it's not about the yeah, developer the utility cost, you right. know so we want to make sure that they have a, a quiet and enjoyable place and can enjoy lower cost utilities mr. Davis question about the sort of that donut hole that is your stormwater retention in the center there um, I see several mentions of proposed uh, curb and gutter are there gonna be cuts in that let will be surface flow into that treatment system or are they going to be it's on one of the plans um, okay. that we peer, uh, periodically will space a curb opening okay. and then the cur the grade around that entire park and area is the same grade so 
the curb cuts spread the water out into right. that. that helps Everything drains the, into the hole, essentially. Yes. It's not going yeah. the other way. That's right. right? And it's That's not right. being fed into that hole via piping, plumbing. There's some piping for the roof drains coming off the buildings that are piped directly to it, but okay. all the parking lot is drained by a surface flow through some curb openings. Got it. And Thanks. I believe, I think I have three curb openings for each of the little, uh, you know, was it eight or seven or eight parking spaces? Okay. So. I just didn't, wasn't noticed here. I was trying to figure out flow it's, direction. It's on maybe a more detailed grading plan that probably the notes are. The... Um, and we've done that design at most of the commercial projects. We keep that curb and gutter flat, and it spreads that water out. Yeah, oh yeah. And we did it through uh, at the beach club, or not the beach club, where Noxie's Grill is. That entire perimeter yes. bioretention system has curb cuts every yep. 25 feet or something okay. like that. I just didn't see them, and I was just curious as to what the flow direction was on the, on the parcel. And this, uh, this site actually drains off uh, to the uh, north. Uh, west there uh, through a swale that goes across the Tanner Farm and uh, oh right goes into that field in the back of that yeah if you look at the aerial image you can kind of see it yep see the swale that goes right behind the convenience store you yes. can see the swale going across there and then this this is a good picture so it they uh, Miss Rosendale built the first six buildings there was four more buildings that were proposed on the back she never got to that point, and the stormwater pond area is right there where it has the tax map and parcel reference, and you can see the concrete outlet structure right there on the edge of the parking. Yep. So it was really just a hole in the ground. So what we're proposing now with the bioretention and uh, uh, you know the ESD practices will improve the water quality uh, and uh, also address quantity control of runoff as well. This. Um Maybe a question more for my fellow commissioners, but uh, I'm assuming at this juncture that it's okay to build construction such as this apartment building in a critical area. Is that a matter that has been before this commission previously, and is it appropriate for us to take it up? So I can probably answer that. Yeah. Uh, there's, yeah, okay. right, I was gonna, there's three land use designations in the critical area, RCA, LDA, and IDA. This, is, this portion of this site's in what's called a LDA, limited development area, and the only restriction on developing in it is that you maintain it impervious cover less than 15%. It doesn't regulate the land use, whether it's commercial or residential. Okay. It just regulates impervious cover and then the requirement to provide the 15% plantings. In an intensely developed area, there's no limit on impervious cover. You have to address some stormwater management requirements above and beyond the county uh, stormwater requirements uh, but there's and again they don't regulate the land use it's more environmental issues so, but in the LDA there's no there's no restriction in our in our critical area ordinance that and was what, what you've heard is that if I correctly understood what Tom told us there is lot coverage it's called lot coverage now um, <laughs> lot coverage greater than 15 percent was created on that corner of the property before critical area legislation became effective uh, which was in in this county it was in 1989 though there were interim interim requirements between 85 and 89 we won't get into those details so the, the lot coverage that's in the critical area portion of this property is in essence grandfathered and what they've said is they're reducing the lot coverage in the critical area by not very much, but 0 0.053 acres. Well, it's in the right direction, yes, and I'm right, delighted right. to have it. But thank right. you. It was more for clarification. Thank you. And while we're on that, Mr. Davis, is that, does that commentary depict it in the orientation of your proposal? Is that why the buildings are slightly askew or not that's symmetrical? Why, that's why we showed this building coming down. Th this right. way, yeah. Mm -hmm. To pull it south to get less lot coverage in the in the LDA. And if you go back to the aerial, like I said, Miss Rosendale had plans uh, for additional building and parking all around there. And at the time, this was intended or should have met the requirements for an intensely developed area. Um, yeah. And that's why it was allowed to develop in the critical area. And then the resulting impervious cover that we have in the critical area is you know, the parking lot you see on, on this exhibit. So, and that, and the loop road all the way around the back. They're even oddly numbered. 
So the, a little bit more background on the critical area and how these designations were created. RCA, which is resource conservation, LDA, which is limited development, and IDA, which is intense development. They were, they're mapped on our critical area maps in every county, not just our county, based upon the land use in existence on December 1, 1985. Um, so that here, because the back half of the property uh, was uh, impacted only by the um, parking lots and the, and the loop road, <clears throat> it received an LDA designation. Um, if, the, if the commercial structures had gone all the way, the, the, it probably would have been IDA if, it had, if they'd gone up and were there in December 1 of 1985. Uh, I thought Queenstown, they said this Queenstown was developed in 86. There in 1985. I don't think that was built before 85. It was being approved around the time critical area law was coming into okay, play. Okay, so it got an IDA designation. Oh, no, it's out of the critical area, so I take that back. What's Queenstown's that? out of the critical Queenstown's area. Queenstown's not in the critical right. area, but the, um, the convenience store actually, I believe, got growth allocation to go to IDA. So you had, that's why, th that's how the map, critical area maps are, were created. You have to go way back in time to see what was on the ground in 1985. That's helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We argued back then that this was uh, should have been IDA because public sewer was right in front of it, which was one of the one key of the things criteria. of criteria for identifying an IDA. And this county was uh, one of the malcontents about the critical area program, um, but yeah. uh, we were uh, completely unsuccessful in our efforts to uh, moderate some of its uh, requirements. Yeah. Glad to answer any other questions you may have. There you go. Okay, there's the map. That's a critical area map there. You can see the red there is the red IDA. IDA. Is IDA. Yeah. Mainly yours. The Chase received growth allocation to turn that into IDA. Yeah. I don't know, 18, 20 So years. if I understand correctly, if those roads had not been there or that parking lot, then it would receive the lowest acceptable level at the time of the law? No, it's not in critical area. No. No, no, but a portion of the road is mm -hmm. the back road that says island. Well, route. let's say that uh, if the tiki huts, if there were 10 of them, such that there were another two in the yellow area in, in 1985, that crescent <coughs> might have been red, it might have been okay. mapped as red. Yeah. But because all that was there at the time, and I'm not even sure that the the uh, parking lot was there in December of 85. That's why I got LDA. You'd have to go pretty much off Kent Island to get RCA. I'm not sure even if you zoomed out, you'd find much RCA on Kent Island. That's up here. So, oh, no, there you go. There's, There's the green like there. That's RCA because in December of 85, there was nothing going on there. Uh, that is... If you go, could you screen, go up north a little bit? Okay. So you see the red there, which is Four Seasons? Yeah. That's all, uh, that was all RCA originally, because there was nothing going on in those fields. And it's now red because the Kavnanian received growth allocation to take it from RCA to IDA so Four Seasons could be developed. Okay. Any other questions? So, Madam Chair, I have a question for the applicant. Uh, have you met with the local fire department and come to terms and agreements yes. with them? Yes. Uh, yes. We met with uh, Jeff Morgan, Muddy Thomas, and Tracy. Tracy Schultz and adjusted the layout and design to uh, address their, some of their concerns. So this is not as it pertains to layout. Uh, eight or nine years ago, there was a law that was passed and introduced into code that requires the applicant to meet with the local fire department and potentially make an offer of uh, impact 
so to speak, for a lack of better words. I think that that was discussed at the meeting. I don't know that you resolved on how you were going to do that, did you, Dave? Well, um, good morning, Commissioner Reese. Um, one thing that I have in motion with the fire department at this point is to do um, training exercise on the property prior to demolition, as well as three to five law enforcement agencies. So that's part of, I believe, what would fit within what you're saying. On top of that, we currently pay, I think it's $5 per rental unit for Chesapeake Village Center to the Kent Island Fire Department, and we will be doing the same for the units that are listed here. And that's per month, sir. And that was worked Thank out. Thank you very much. That was worked out with uh, yes, sir. Chief Jody Schultz when he was in charge there, what, seven years ago? So, sure. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Davis, just a question about the public outreach component of this project and the last that was discussed. Is it typical that commercial entities, businesses that surround the, your proposed developments in the last, this case in the last one, that you get just that one or two out of six or eight neighbors? Typically, you know, commercial developments around this, uh, yeah. we, we didn't get any uh, right. feedback. When we did Jim's project on Postal Road, there was a couple neighbors. Uh, it was mostly um, residential, Charlie, though, right? I can't remember Charlie's name. We met with them and addressed their right. concerns, and actually two, two neighbors showed up on that one. But they were residential surroundings well, was the, more the so one, than these. The one was like a nail salon or a hair cuttery on the uh, uh, like 552 side, and we agreed to put some additional plantings or something along there, and then we did a fence for Charlie. I can't think of Charlie's name. But I, anyway. It's just an observation, right, that we see relatively strong turnout sometimes by the general public, yeah. but we don't hear or see or read. The, the, the business entity, the commercial right. conversation side. So the, the code says we have to send a notification to adjacent landowners, and I believe it might cover across the street, and we typically do that by what's called a certificate of mailing. So we show the county staff that we've done that by you know, showing mail. them. Well, it's not certified mail. It's called a certificate of mailing. So that you actually sent it. Yes. Got it. Just the, the turnout is just an observation. I'm curious as to whether it's... They don't care what gets built in them, or they don't share the concerns that the general public residential side shares. Actually, um, Commissioner, they have told me personally that they welcome it because it will bring it will bring customers to their location. Well, oh, if I live right next door to a bank, yes, sir, I'd, and I'd be eating a McDonald's every other day. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> I like lived here. Western Auto will be able to do some tire changes, oil sure. changes, and things. No, I of get that. that. Sure. But 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 then to that point, Ms. Razor, yeah, I'm. It, you don't get the the letters of support either, right? No, no sir, because people don't take time out time of their to day to say sure. something nice. No, I get it. <laughs> I'm just, it's, it's just an observation. They'll, people will come out here and stand in line to throw knives at you, but they don't often say, add a boy, go for it. Yes, sir. So, all right. Thank you. And another sidebar, the applicant is proposing redevelopment that is a per permitted use in the zoning district and incorporates design that is compatible with surrounding architecture, correct? Correct. Sounds like a motion. Okay, well, now it's not a motion, but we need a motion. <laughs> can, we, can I get a motion? Uh, well, 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 well. Oh, um, public, comment. public comment. Yeah. Yeah, public comment. Anything? Do you have anything on? I think that Mr. Porter did raise his hand, and I'm not sure. Mr. Porter, would you like to turn your microphone on to speak? <coughs> Yes, my microphone uh, should be on. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I just wanted to say... Uh, in, we need in, to... Uh, hey, wait a minute. Who are you with? Oh, that's Trey Porter. I am Department of Public Works. Oh, that's Trey Porter. Okay. Sorry. And, uh, yes. I'm, I'm actually at a conference right now, and uh, so I'm remoting in. Um, I wanted to take an opportunity to just kind of let you know a little bit about how DPW reviewed this project, and one of the things that we do is we, we commonly make regulatory comments and we also make some suggestions. And I want to point out that this particular developer uh, responded favorably to the suggestions that we made, which was to say, um, I think that they initially proposed a very linear stormwater management feature. 
um, and we wanted kind of a, a kidney shape or some some type of something to make it not look like it was engineered and blend in a little bit more. Uh, a couple other comments that we had that were non-regulatory but were suggested were um, having more foundation plantings and uh, initially the, the building was up against the sidewalk in the front orientation of the building. Again, these are not um, public works comments necessarily, but it's when we're sitting down at the table and we have um, you know, certain ideas and uh, at stack meetings and other meetings like that. I just wanted to point out that this uh, this applicant's been very responsive and we uh, we appreciate that. Good. Thank you. There, you got a, that's a guy. <laughs> okay. Any other public comment? Specifically spells out Chesapeake Square. I mean, it's a Mary Okay, I'm back. So this one comes from Mary Wagner, Stevensville, Maryland. Commissioners, I would like to add my voice to the other like-minded residents of our county to vote against this new development. We haven't even seen what the traffic will be like when the monstrosity being built by KHOV is completed. So the mere thought of adding more congestion to this area is simply irresponsible. We already are not able to leave our homes on Sunday afternoons due to the beach traffic during the summer. We don't need to have that situation all year long. Thanks to the development down Route 8, this has become a nightmare every morning and evening and there's still more to come please stop allowing so much development that our little island has become another glen burney again that's mary wagner stevensville maryland that's it we're actually on public comment for both i don't know how we didn't know how to put that on the paper out front i think unless you don't need that for both no i think i think you um clarified that when you came up i believe okay. as long as it, i did yeah does it, and it yeah. does count for both then yes All right. Any more public comment? Can I get a motion? That thing's going to blare at us in 148. Thanks. Madam Chairwoman, we did have uh, someone on Zoom who just put their hand up. Um, would you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Miss Wade, Miss Gross Wade, do you have a public comment? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, commissioners. I'm Shelly Gross Wade, a resident of Kent Island. I've lived in Stevensville for the last 24, 25 years, and I serve on the Economic Development and Tourism Commission. I would just like to add my voice to the list of supporters for this project. I think it is a good example of repurposing property that has been undeveloped and an eyesore in our community for a number of years. And so with that, let me clarify that it is a personal uh, vote of approval and not a representation of the Economic, and De Economic Development and Tourism Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, can I get a motion? <coughs> I'm pulling teeth from my hand. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll make a motion. All right. I don't like that. Free, but anyway. Go for it, Teddy. Uh, it's resolved that the Planning Commission regarding the request by a w Investments LLC for major site plan approval for redevelopment of one parcel along Main Street to include two three-story, 21-unit residential apartment buildings and a 232-square-foot pavilion, and as more particularly described in Department Plan Zoning File, SP number 23-02-0100, hereby finds that this major site plan, one, 
does meet all requirements for Chapter 18. Two, will not substantially increase traffic hazards or safety concerns due to traffic generated by the proposed use, location, or orientation of curb cuts or the layout of internal circulation. Three, does contain a layout of buildings, parking roads, and utility does not, that does not substantially increase fire, health, or other public safety hazards. Four, is adequately buffered and screened to minimize potential adverse impacts to neighboring properties and public right-of-ways. Five, will not substantially increase stormwater drainage or pollution. Six, will not have an unreasonably adverse effect upon property values in the vicinity of the site. Seven, will not adversely affect the public welfare and will provide for public safety through compliance with the state fire code and with any applicable county or municipal fire codes. Eight, is compatible with the general character of the surrounding neighborhood. And nine, is consistent with the purposes, goals, and objectives of the 2022 Comprehensive Plan and hereby grants major site plan approval subject <coughs> to the following conditions. One, any remaining edits and or documents required by a reviewing agency, the Department of Public Works or Planning Zoning be reviewed and approved. Two, the architectural, <coughs> the architecture, lighting and overall site design must substantially reflect the documents provided. Three, per the June 9th, 2022 approval of the increase in density to 20 units per acre, the applicant shall provide information to indicate that the apartments will provide workforce, age-restricted, or other moderately priced housing. Four, any required legal documents must be approved, signed, and recorded prior to obtaining final signatures. Five, all required bonds, sureties, review, and inspection fees must be submitted to the Department of Public Works and the Planning and Zoning as appropriate. Six, all required signatures must be obtained. Uh, may I uh, you. ask you to... Um, confirm that the legal documents that are required under condition number four. four include an enforceable agreement to assure that the uh, tenants meet the, uh, uh, the workforce housing um, um, status. Number four. Is that not covered under three? It says ask for information. Uh, not enforceable. I'm sorry. Yeah, I see the distinction. Okay. Okay. That may be with the Department of Housing rather than Planning and Zoning. Second. Um, open question. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Reese, are you voting? Yes, I'm in favor. Okay. All in favor. Thank you. Got it. Thank you, Commissioner. Any public comments? <laughs> we have nothing out there now. John? Yeah, I don't think so. So then I am probably looking for my favorite motion. Good job. Yeah. May I get a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. 